First and foremost, this is an issue of patient safety. Uh, we know that uh, alarm fatigue is much more than a nuisance. It's a threat to our patients. Part of what happens when you're trying to monitor all these people, there's this phenomenon that happens that you don't trust the alarms anymore. And one of our cardiologists did just a real quick chart check, and he estimated perhaps 50% of our patients receiving um, remote monitoring on non-cardiac units did not need it at all. I think I've had for years an intuitive sense that the alarms just weren't an effect, you know, weren't being effective. They were often triggering when they shouldn't be. Um, and so one of the things that was interesting was to see all the data, to actually see mathematically and graphically um, what alarm fatigue looks like by the numbers. So we want to set appropriate alarms based on that individual patient. And that means we have then decreased our risk for alarms that maybe aren't clinically relevant or important. And actually that means when those alarms sound, our clinicians know it, it's really something to respond to. Alarm fatigue is real and nurses do, and all staff, they do get desensitized to the monitors, but it's very important to check parameters and make sure that the patient has all that they need, but it's also very important to check the patient and to address the alarms at all times. So I would suggest to other facilities that you go and look at your current process to see whether or not you're missing these small items. Have we designed a system to make humans fail?